Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and today I'm going to build this guy a brake van or caboose. So first of all, just a bit of information on what a brake van or caboose actually is. Uh, I'm not a massive uh, train expert by any means, and the first time it was mentioned in the comments that that was something I should do, something I should add to my cargo train, well, I had to Google it, quite frankly. I didn't know what they were talking about. But essentially, it's uh, a car that would always go at the back of a train, uh, and it would be some space for some additional train cargo staff to work and uh, basically be located on the train. And there were a number of different uh, purposes that that car had. First was, uh, as the name brake van would suggest, was to apply brakes, especially on steep downhill gradients, where just the uh, train brake alone would not be enough. Uh, and that was because uh, back in the day, before there were continuous brakes uh, sort of running along the bottom, probably via pneumatics, I imagine, uh, on all the cars, which is the case nowadays, you'd only have had a brake in the front locomotive. So this would add a second one. It also had another benefit in that if one of the couplings broke between two uh, carriages, then essentially you'd have just turned one train into two trains. And because this one was right at the back, and obviously the uh, engine would be right at the front, they would both have the ability to stop. Whereas uh, if you didn't have a brake van, then the back half could technically roll back down a hill uh, if it was uh, an uphill slope or, uh, well, do anything really. Uh, another thing that they were used for was to just observe the uh, train in front of them uh, and look for derailed cars or shifted loads or something like that. So it's very much safety based, something that's very much from yesteryear really rather than uh, the current time. But it seems to be a very popular feature for train buffs and enthusiasts. So although it probably isn't strictly necessary for the beast, my cargo train, to have one of these on the back... Uh, I think I will still do one because they're quite good fun. Now, here's a picture of a real life caboose. Uh, and what I like about this one is it's bright red, just like the beast. So I think I'll try and replicate that. It's got this open end so people can sort of uh, come out and look at the train and inspect it as it's going. It's also got a ladder for roof access and so on. And the little raised bit in the middle is for bunk space, so they could sleep on incredibly long journeys, which is definitely true uh, on the sort of more caboose side of things in North America. Uh, whereas uh, brake vans in the UK probably weren't going such long distances, so would typically be more flat. But that's quite a fun feature, so I guess what I'm making today really is probably more of a caboose than a brake van. Uh, and you can also see on there they've got a stove sort of chimney pot because uh, you'd uh, be stuck in this thing for quite a few hours, something we can probably all relate to. Uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, you uh, would need to make your own food and all the rest of it while you were uh, at work. So there we go. That is what we're trying to do. Now, Lego has actually made a caboose and a red one at that uh, with set 10014 caboose. Uh, and that's a great set. Uh, in a way, I'd like to just buy that and own that, but it's got a few problems with it. Uh, first of all, it's incredibly expensive because it's old and quite rare. Uh, it's got the old magnets uh, on for joining cars, but that doesn't really matter. But it's definitely too tall for my setup because of the way I've set up all things like Castle Rock and all that. It wouldn't fit under even if I did manage to get one. It's also slightly too wide and would actually hit... Uh, all my departure boards in my station uh, as it went through. So it's no good really. So what I'm going to do is use that as a basis for my build, but then completely reimagine it uh, and do one that is very Brick Nottingham friendly and uh, has got probably a few more modern pieces in it as well. And it will save me a heck of a lot of money. <laughs> right, let's get started. Now, before we can get started on the caboose itself, I need to modify this, which is our current uh, back car on the Beast uh, cargo train. And that's because it actually has a sort of termination here rather than 
another magnet. And that's just because, uh, well, I didn't have enough really. So I'm going to take that off, uh, put this on, and then this can go on the back end of the caboose because uh, that really will be the back carriage uh, and any new ones will uh, go obviously in front of it. Otherwise it kind of defeats the object. So if you haven't seen this, this is my timber car with the timber ends on both sides. And on it is a criminal who's dressed up as a piece of uh, lumber in the tree costume. And he's got his binoculars so he can watch the bullion van, which is uh, further up the train. So that's fine. So if I just pull that off, I can take that for use on the caboose. And then I just need to put this back on there without destroying everything else. I think that needs pushing down a bit more, but I'll probably finish that off camera. But there we go. So that's that sorted. Brilliant. So I'll only need one more magnet for my caboose. Uh, and it's very important, actually, if you're going to do something similar, that this is a very strong magnet. You can't have a weak one, because if you ask any train expert, they'll definitely tell you that there's nothing worse than a loose caboose. So a pretty standard base, train base, uh, with the uh, newly liberated end piece on one end. Two by six brick in the middle. And our really extra strong magnet on the other end to avoid loose caboose. And then we can add our wheels. Inset two for the end. So this is an eight by, uh, rather six by 16 plate for the top. And there we go. This is probably going to make it tricky to film all the rest of it because it's now on wheels. But there we go. A train base very firmly held on all sides. Excellent. Right. So some cabooses are double ended in the sense they've got kind of that standing outdoor area bit on both ends. But I think I'm going to do mine much like the official Lego set and only have it on one end. Uh, just because we haven't got a great deal of space to uh, work with. And also it will make it a bit more varied as opposed to being too uh, symmetrical. Um, so first thing is to put one of these kind of fence modified plate type pieces uh, on each end. And then everything from this point onwards, we've got to remember which is the front and which is the back. So this is the back and is therefore going to have these sort of brake lights on it and, um, and won't have the kind of balcony, I'm going to call it, sort of viewing platform bit. Just some brackets with some more grill pieces for texture on both sides. Whereas the bit on, whoop, on this end will be the bit looking up the train, which is the way they should be looking, so they can see all the cars in front of them and know whether they have to take any action. So this will be the bit they'll get on and stand at. Therefore, that's quite uh, simple. You can see this is now sort of becoming the sort of C shape of the building itself. So the next thing we can do is start putting some bricks on that. Now, much like the official Lego set, I've tried to use as many red bricks as I can with some sort of different texture on. So I've got some headlight bricks, got some of these uh, profile bricks with the nice texture on. And that's just to make it interesting. And there's one of those horizontal handles. And then one of those kind of vertical handles kind of does for a handrail to get up the stairs. So we'll do that the same on the other side. Make sure I get these all the right way. Otherwise there'll be complaints. Right, good, good. So that is our little enclosed space. Now, there's a couple of things that I'm going to have to um, decide as we build this. 
uh, because I've got some alternatives. The first one is the original had these uh, headlight bricks, but has a very sort of expensive and hard to find uh, black tile with kind of white and black uh, stripes on it, which isn't particularly important. Uh, now I've got two of this, which is kind of a different white and red hazard stripe, which is from all sorts of old sets. There's about 16 of them, uh, like 4549 road and rail hauler. Uh, so I could put that on, and it looks something like that. But then it might be that I want to do something a lot more simple, like just put on another black grill. So what I'm going to do is put, at the moment, one different option on each side. And then at the end, we can uh, decide which one we like and uh, make them both the same. Now, the other thing that we have to decide is what uh, windows to use. And the reason being that I bought these lovely windows here with this kind of frosted look and this lovely red outline, especially for use with this caboose. And uh, that's very good. No problem there, except the windows, the window frames that I bought were these sort of train windows uh, that are also used on planes and things. And if you put this in here, then, well, you only get the very top of that pattern. So it's kind of wasted. So should I keep the frame or should I keep the glass? So if I put a normal pane of glass in the sort of train slash plane type window and have that as option one, and then have the nice ornate glass in a regular window frame, so you can see all that lovely pattern and have that as option two. So what I'm going to do is use the windows on one half using option one and the other half using option two. And then we can sort of flip it around and see which one of those we like better. Because of my um, you know, purchasing issue, I've got enough of both uh, anyway. And the other lot won't go to waste because I'll just be able to use them in a building somewhere. So uh, yeah, so that's my thinking going forward. So the original had a yellow stripe, and I've got to say, I really like that. So, yep, I'm going to have a yellow stripe. So I'll put that on. So it won't be identical in colouring to the beast, but you always get quite a mismatch with the uh, rail carriages because they always get shunted around and one becomes uh, attached to another and so on. So the front uh, has some more of those profile bricks and I'm going to use one of my patterned windows, which is very nice. And then has more of these modified bricks on each side. Like that. And then for the near side, I'm going to use the train windows. So we can have one, some bricks, another a column, another, and a continuation of that handle. Let's secure that while we're here with that brick, that brick. Okay, and then we'll flip it to do the frosted patterned windows, which are very nice, I must say. But they'll be nice wherever I use them, so uh, don't let me influence the decision too much. I'm thinking that one's back to front. Brick. I think that one's back to front as well. There we go. So there's our two sides. The pattern side with its quite wide windows looking quite open. And the front as well. And then the other side with the train windows. Which do look a bit sort of Harder to see through and a bit blocky. Hmm. Too early to decide. Uh, right, and then I've got a couple of brake lights, which are just red uh, one by one round plates into a one by one modified plate with clip or tile with clip. And they just clip on either side of here. And that further makes it look like the back of the train. Very good. Right, so uh, on to the next stage. 
Now, another thing to consider is whether to actually put some nice stickers on these uh, quite large expanses of wall. Now, they are two bricks joined together, so we couldn't have something spanning the two bricks, but it just so happens that I've got some red uh, one by four by two uh, panel pieces. They could take quite a big sticker. And I've looked through my stickers, and I do have some from the, uh, what it's from 60098, which is the train the beast is from. And I had another uh, set of stickers just because I needed some of them for the uh, coal car, I think it was. Uh, and well, we've got one by four brick edge with sort of uh, the train logo on in red. Or we've got this kind of one that would fit the panel very well. Uh, a clear sticker with a massive uh, train logo on as well. So how would that look? Really hard to imagine it, isn't it? But um, it'd kind of be like that. Do we like that? I think it might look quite good. Or do we want a smaller one? It couldn't be in the middle because obviously it'd span the bricks. It'd have to either be high or low. But I'm thinking that the bigger one will be better. So I'm going to try that on one of these panel pieces. And here it is with those stickers. They're quite big and very bold, but I think I like them a lot. Uh, it's going to be very noticeable and it'll kind of link it in with the beast, which I like as well. So yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm not hundred percent, but I do, uh, I do think on balance that uh, that's a good thing. Right. So uh, on to the next stage. Uh, now the original had uh, a door, an actual working door, but the fact is there's really not any room to open it anyway fully, not enough to get a person out. So um, I thought I'd just do kind of a fake door because all the passenger trains don't have functioning doors. And also because I haven't got enough height to work with. First of all, the old set had a five tall door because all doors were only five bricks tall in those days rather than the six they are today. And they kind of looked a bit odd. I think that was a good move by Lego. But what I've got here is one, two, three, four height. And that's just not going to be enough for a decent working door. So I've got no problem with putting in uh, a lower one made out of uh, bricks. Now, even before I put that in, uh, another change I want to make from the real set is to have this so we can lift the roof off. Like a lot of carriages, passenger carriages, you want to be able to sort of be able to peer inside and see uh, the interior. So I want to basically use a tile layer on top of this so we can lift off some of the roof. And I say some of the roof because there's an overhang on this end uh, and it's not going to be very structurally strong if we have that bit removing. So I think I'll just have the middle section of the roof uh, removable. Right, so inside, the first most important thing is a little stove which I just made a little sort of glowing brick enclosed in that, very much like the original. We can put that in at one side and that's going to link up with uh, the chimney pot on the outside. So it's important I have a pipe linking the stove up to that. So that's what that is. And I've got it two bricks, one plate and one tile, just so it fits with that uh, roof that we were just talking about. And I thought I'd add a frying pan on the stove, which is uh, eating his breakfast or something like that. Yeah, because what train man wouldn't want a bacon sandwich for his breakfast? Uh, so he's obviously going to need a table then. So this is just a two by two on some uh, grey bricks and a little yellow chair to go with the yellow stripe on some one by ones just to give that a bit more interest as well. OK, so all down one side, pretty basic, but I think that's all there would be. But uh, that's probably all he needs. If he's got his uh, heat sauce and his uh, bacon sandwich, then I'm sure he's very happy. Right, so let's get this door built. So we still need to continue the yellow stripe. And for now, I'm going to use the train windows because the back and this side are going to be train windows because I've already used one of the ornate ones on the front. And then a couple of those on top of that. 
So that's that. And I'm just going to, as is the style of these things, it seems, recess that one stud. So it's kind of got that. And I think that looks uh, quite pleasing, having this sort of recessed bit there. And it also gives a bit more room uh, for this guy to stand on the back. So he's already got his mug of tea, which is very important to uh, wash down your bacon sandwich. So um, if I can get him on here, which I can't at the moment. There we go. Don't know why that was so difficult. Good, so it's starting to uh, shape up. And I've got him as being one of the cargo guys, because obviously this is a, a cargo train. He's still got the uh, train logo on his uh, high-vis jacket. Right, so on to the tile layer uh, and the start of the roof. Now, I said earlier, the width of the original uh, would hit the uh, departure boards in the main station. So uh, I've deliberately made it uh, modified so it doesn't. So this is too low, these are too low, that's too low to hit. And also, thankfully, these long gutter pieces are also too low to hit it. If they're a bit higher on the actual sort of sleeping quarters bit, then, um, oh, wrong place, uh, then they would hit. So we won't be able to have any side detailing higher than this. So we've got a nice pleasing overhang here. So we've got the overhang of one on the front because two of these eight longs is 16 long, obviously, and two on the back, which will obviously keep the rain out of uh, this guy's tee. So I'll put one of those on both sides. There we go. So on the back, just need to build it up. And as I said, this is going to uh, actually be permanently attached. So I'm just going to use plates and part of the reason is because um these roof pieces actually only have uh, anti-studs on the front and back so this wouldn't be very well connected at all if um it wasn't firmly down but there you go so there's the back roof that's over his head then similarly at the front get some plates on for a bit to be held firmly in place. So therefore, we've got the middle section, which has got all the important stuff visible, so it can be removed. So I'm gonna have two of those uh, tiles that have got the stud on either end for here. And I'm gonna have two tiles. Now these are red because that's gonna turn up into the upstairs bit of the caboose, and therefore it's gonna continue this sort of band of red that's here uh, up into the top structure. So it's already looking rather fantastic actually, isn't it? A uh, bit of detailing. We need our ladder for the end so he can get up and he can still sort of look round that to uh, see what the train's up to. And then it seems they all have lots of handrails on the top so when you are on the top of the train you can um, <laughs> hang on or not fall off. That's always quite important, isn't it? Uh, so we've got that on all of these, so he presumably has to scramble all over this thing. Great, so there we are. There is everything but the middle bit now. Right, so we're almost there. Final stage before we decide between the uh, two types of windows. So I've got three uh, of the sort of train star windows and three of the ornate windows, so we can continue doing all the front and... What's that going to be? Left side, I suppose, if it's going that way. Uh, windows ornate and the other two sides in train. So the first thing I need is a 4x8 and that's sort of going to be slotting in to that gap so it guides it in very well. And then that's going to be the caboose side or, or the sleeper bit uh, anyway. And that's going to be regular roof. So it's going to look kind of like that. So you can see that red colour is continuing through that tile there into the superstructure. So on the back, we're going to need the train windows. And on the far side, put in some of these pillars on the corners. And then on the near side, one of those, and on the front, 
two of those and a pillar another red layer and then two angled roof pieces now this is where you would have had the extra bit of gutter that would definitely hit the departure boards that's how close uh, this will be to absolutely everything uh, I've already had to uh, increase the height of one of the trees near the train line just because this would have hit it uh, I've done some measuring in advance right so this goes on to there hey hey and we're getting really caboose looking now so there's the angle with those two sides with the ornate windows. I've got to say I'm liking that because it's uh, quite bright and nice. And then here's the more traditional look, which is looking a bit dark. I must, uh, I must say that's looking a lot darker and kind of blocky, whereas they're sort of making the windows more of a feature. So maybe I was right to uh, get these ornate ones. Anyway, we've got another handrail here just to continue that on that piece. And then a chimney top, which we better align correctly. So it's uh, two in from the end. So that aligns with the stove below. And just to show uh, some of the smoke from the coal that he's probably burning in the stove. Just got one of these sort of feather pieces that used to be on knight's helmets you can just slot that in there and that's obviously going that way because uh, the train is going that way very nice right so what do we think of that i think it looks rather fantastic i really like the fact that we've got another minifigure sort of riding the cargo train uh, i really like the ladder on this end as well I very much like this. I think it does fit now. Now we've got everything else in. I think it's, uh, I'm glad I went for the really big one. I think they are working really uh, fantastically. I like the fact that it's got kind of a very solid end with some brake lights. And I love this yellow stripe. Yeah, very good. And most importantly of all, we can look inside with a very easily removable roof and very easily replaceable roof as well. No, nope, doesn't move. So the last thing then is to decide whether we like this or this. And I think it's probably the grill piece. That just looks weird. What's the hazard? I don't get it. No, I don't like that. So I'm going to take that one off. And then I think these windows, although they are the right ones in inverted commas, uh, I just think they're too dark. Whereas, oop, whereas these... Although sort of frosted, they're kind of old fashioned as well, this detail. Yeah, I just think they're right. I think they are the ones we're going to use. And I don't mind the fact that the bottom of them is sort of concealed with this roof. Uh, it just makes them look a slightly different size. That's fine. Yep, right. I'm going to do all the swaps needed uh, and then we'll have the final product. And there we are, the finished caboose with uh, the frosted windows all the way around, which I've thought makes even more sense on the bunk bit because um, you'd want a bit of privacy in there. And even the door behind the man, looks good. And I think these grills just are a bit better than those hazard stripes. We've already got now the detailing of this um, logo, so we don't really need them. Yeah, I just love the smoke coming out of the top. And the fact we can have a good peek inside. So that's wonderful. Really like that. Nice and bright. Matches the uh, beast. And uh, as long as it's not a loose caboose. Nope. We should be golden. Let's get this up to the Lego room. Uh, and attached to the train. Whizzing round Brick Nottingham. Still haven't forgotten the car of the day. This is just a regular blue car with a nice white roof. And that's from set uh, 60081, which is the pickup tow truck. And this is the uh, car that broke down in that set. But it strikes me that we've got quite a few, uh, you know, different types of vehicle on our streets, which is fantastic. But um, we haven't got that many ordinary cars. So uh, there's one more of those. And I've changed the wheels as usual, so it doesn't have the strange balloon tyres on 
and uh, has the sort of normal profile ones that are a bit more realistic. So that's good. Whizzing over here, I just wanted to show you uh, those new stickers that we got in the hall, uh, not last time but the time before, with the lovely golden fish on this background on this old style sign, which I'm going to use as the sign for my fish and chip shop. And I thought I'd hang it off that wall there, which isn't the most visible from all angles, but um, it's definitely very effective. Maybe I'll swap it round actually with the uh, front one there. I don't know. Let's try that. Oh, that's got a very long stem. Maybe that's a bit better there. So it can be seen from the beach. Yeah, you'll have to tell me what you think is best and I can put the uh, flag for the uh, instructions from the Coast Guard and the uh, lifeguard as to no motorsports on that end of the beach. Maybe that's better on the back. Yeah, I'm not sure. Tell me what you think. Anyway, back to our caboose. Let's get a caboose in the hoose and attach this to the back of our train. There we are. And I think you'll agree that that is looking rather fantastic. And it's brake lights. Oh, incidentally, I also added two very small uh, square stickers on the back there on that one by six brick at the bottom, with just a tiny sort of square of hazard striping on each side. It's from the same sticker sheet. I thought uh, when I was putting it away that it looked quite good. Uh, and it kind of makes up for us not using those hazard striped tiles on the side. Uh, and it makes more sense in being on the back, sort of, um, you know, don't crash into this. <laughs> right, so there we are. And there's our criminal in disguise who's checking out the uh, bullion car, which if you didn't know, oh, is full of gold bars. So that's what he's after. Right, let's get this show going. With... The cargo train. And there it goes. Looking very good. Oh yeah. And it matches whoop, the beast. It's going a bit fast. So it's red at that end with our spinning cement or concrete mixer. And red at that end as well. Okay, let's get the uh, white train going as well. Fantastic. Have them crossing our bridge. Wonderful. But that caboose looks really good. It does look a bit uh, old fashioned, but then it is. And I love the smoke coming out of the top of it. Yeah. I might have to move the timber car and the bullion car that he's watching because otherwise the man in a tree costume is standing right in front of that rail employee, isn't he? So um, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It wouldn't be a very effective... Uh, disguise if it was uh, completely in front of somebody else. That spinning uh, concrete mixer is absolutely amazing. <laughs> Sorry Caboose, you may be new but the concrete mixer is officially better. <laughs> right, I'm going to have to reorder these carriages I think because it's uh, sort of annoying me that that disguise guy's right in front of that train employee. Now this is the tree I had to raise for the caboose. I've got the train running a lot more slowly now so you can see how close it comes. Everything else going under and the caboose being the tallest thing. Oh, just under that tree. Just under all of those. That sweat. And then look at these uh, 
departure boards. This is what it also had to miss. Oh, it is literally just missing those. And then here's the uh, bridge. Oh, <laughs> I mean, it really looks like it's going to hit, but hasn't. So that's the main thing. Uh, and I've swapped around all these carriages now. So we've got the uh, train, all the short cars and the rotating drum at the front. And then the bullion car and the criminal. And then we've got the container ones, the crane, the rocks, the cars and the electrical cabling. And I've put the green one second last just because it's a good contrast to the red because we've got a lot of red with the car one and that one with the rocks in already. So uh, yeah, looking good. I like those stripe stickers on. I think it's looking pretty awesome. And a quick reminder for those of you who haven't yet voted on my Lego Ideas submission, Fast Food Corner, the details of which and a link are in the description of this video. But uh, that's my submission that I need 10,000 votes to have the opportunity of making my modular mock a real life set. But I still need a lot more support. So if you could take two minutes to register and just give me a quick click, that would be absolutely fantastic and very much appreciated. <laughs> So as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, we'll be back in the city for another city update. Can't wait. See you then.